Hi everyone, it's Mark Benz here. Thank you so much for coming back to Massage Therapy Marketing Tips. Today I want to talk about the three things that I just, I didn't realize, I didn't really even appreciate uh, are happening or what happened when I became a massage therapist. So I want to give you my three things as a massage therapist that just started to play out and were really interesting. They were just, you need to consider them. And I wish someone really explained it to me like I'm going to explain it to you today ahead of time. First one, how manually demanding this job can be. It can be extremely hard on your body. And so if you say to yourself, you know what, I can give a massage. And I hear this from uh, new uh, grads and they come in and they just do double shifts and like two double shifts in a row and they're doing like 20 people in two days and it's like yes you can do that but that's not going to be sustainable and it simply is because if you are just doing Swedish massage as we would know it and just you know grinding it out hands thumbs elbows you're going to, at some point, depending on your body structure, and of course how intense it gets for you, you're going to wear down your finger joints. You're going to wear down your thumb joint, your wrist joint, elbow, shoulder. Like It's no different than someone doing hard labor. But we think as therapists, wow, I'm a massage therapist. I'm just going to get at it. For sure, you can get at it. But please understand there's going to be a cumulative effect on your body and what I teach all new massage therapists is figure out strategies early. There's so many different things um, you can incorporate. So please don't go down the path of just doing massage and not looking at the, the sort of cost opportunity. Number two, and this is an interesting one, and I didn't appreciate this. When I got into the treatment room, I didn't appreciate how much time as a massage therapist I'm spending one-on-one -on -one with the clients. And you think, well, that's ridiculous, Mark. You should have understood that. And of course, in theory, I understood it. But theory and practical application are two different things. Theoretically, someone knows uh, they could learn how to swim. You could read a book, chuck them in the water, completely different story. And that's the type of thing that happened to me. I got into the treatment room. I'm like, whoa, for me, this is way too much one-on-one -on -one time. And so in my case, I need greater stimulus. I thrive on connecting in larger groups. And so if you think about the cumulative effect of being in a treatment room, and at times I was doing five one-hour treatments, 10 half-hour treatments, the cumulative effect of that day after day after day, it started to wear me down and I'm just like, what's wrong with this? And I didn't get it. And what was happening is that energetically, I wasn't matching what I was doing as a massage therapist. And so for me, it was exhausting going to work. Exhausting. My God, by the end of the week, I was like, holy doodle granny, do I have to do this again? And so really understand that if you're amazing at one-on-one, -on -one, then this is it, man. This is a fantastic place to be but also appreciate if you are someone that needs to be in a group start to understand how you can incorporate that uh, into your practice because you don't want to burn out because energetically you didn't match with the um, the practicality of of how a massage therapy practice works so again Think about that because it is a cumulative impact. And so for me, I can work all day doing videos. Love it. I can talk all day on a phone to a therapist about their practice and how to grow it. Love it. 15 hour days I thrive on. Put me in a treatment room and I'm just like, whoa. Just energetically it brings me down. Uh, number three is what you bill is not what you take home. So in, in Canada and Vancouver, we're billing at $136.50 for an hour. And you might say to yourself, whoa, Mark, that's a lot of money. 
Like, this is incredible. Yeah, it, it is. The billable's high, but like in any business, what the top number is and what you take home consistently, and that's the key, consistently. A lot of people love to throw numbers around and go, I made this, I made that. And I always say, did you make it consistently? And so I like to look at it if someone's been around a while, I say, hey, what did you make last year in total? How many hours did you work? How many days did you work? It gives us a full understanding. Or look at it over a week or a month. Don't look at it as the single treatment or, hey, I made an amazing day. Uh, it might not be repeatable. And so you got to think about it. And I'll just give an example in Canada. So for our services, we have to pay something called GST. That's 5% tax to the government. And that's just on the service. So we take 5% off the 136.50. Then you pay rent. Again, rent, rent can vary a wide range depending on what type of uh, clinic you're at. If you're a solo practice, just so many different things. Um, advertising, I mean, it's just so many variables. I mean, that's why we have this channel is to expose you to all the opportunities, the variables, the pluses, the negatives to how to run a practice. So that's a wide range when, it, when we talk about rent. Then after that, that's what you take home. Now when you say what you take home, that's different and in Canada we have to now pay personal tax on that. Personal tax can be anywhere from like 48% down to let's say about 25%. So you can imagine that dollar amount at 136.50 can easily get to $60 like that, easily. And so if you say to yourself, well, geez, that's interesting, then how do you look at what that um, can accumulate to consistently, hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month, so you can actually plan successfully being a massage therapist? And that had a real impact on me because, again, I got caught up in like, whoa, look at that billable. And boy, let me tell you, and, and I run a, a practice now with all these therapists, and it's, it's clear to me over the years that needs to be, that should have been told to me earlier. And so I hope I've clearly articulated that please don't get caught up in the top line. It's always the bottom line because that's the money you can spend on yourself. So there you go. There are the top three things I wish as a massage therapist, someone had told me. And now let's go through them again, okay? First thing, manually demanding. The job's manually demanding and can be, but you can absolutely change it. Second thing, figure out energetically what does it mean to be in that treatment room, change it if necessary or keep it because it absolutely fits your energetic um, path. Third thing is, what you bill on the top line or charge is not what you're making and taking home and spending on yourself and your family. Okay, guys, thanks so much. If you love the video, please, like always, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, go to Facebook because we're also there and like us there. And I can't wait to put more videos out and get out there and take action. We'll see you soon.